פישוט מורה ורבותי ודיבר בשירת השם דגיס הפרשה הפרשה אוף ראה לוק ראה השם נוטה לפניכם היום ברכה וקללה לוק השם הגיביו דברך דקללה What is this Devaracha? Devaracha when you listen to the voice of Hashem. What is this Dekelala? If you don't listen to the voice of Hashem. That means that a lot of times people they can become happy when they hear, when they listen to good news. Only hearing a good news is make you happy. Sometimes that makes you sad when you listen to the bad news. So that means only through listening a good news or a bad news, it can be, it can do an effect on you. Something else. Sometimes you, you, you see something good. It makes you happy. Like a woman. You give her a diamond. The damage she will not eat it. She only look at it. Yes or no? She yeah. only look at it. She will not eat it. And that gives her a very a big satisfaction. And that gives her a big happiness. Or there is something that you can see and that makes you sad. You see an accident. It makes you sad. You see something bad. Make, you see a dead man. It makes you... So you see... Then you think that you listen, it makes you good or bad. You think that you can see, it makes you good or bad. And that, at, at, the, at, the advice of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the advice of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Zohar HaKadosh said, that the Torah is advice. The Torah is etzot. The Torah, it gives you etzot, how can a man can be all his life happy or how a man can be all his life sad through listening, through looking Torah Kedusha or be positive or be negative you know in this uh, in the lifetime of a person always he see and always he is now only through what you see and what you listen the action can come. Like the Torah said about Yitro, Vaishma Yitro, Yitro he heard, he heard, what he heard, he heard all the Nisim that Hashem did, what was the rest, he came. There were a lot of people who listened all the Nisim, all the miracles that Hashem did to the Jews, but no one came. Only Yitro came. Why? Because what he listened, he really, he repeated and repeated and repeated and they were thinking de- very, very deeply about what he think. And that bring him to a conclusion to come. A lot of times we see, we, it seems that we hear the same things that we, that we, we listen. You listen the same thing that I heard. And why I change and you don't change? It's different how every one of us listen. There is people who are just listening and just, uh, you know, surface. They just listen, uh, you know, it's still the air. Yeah. And there is others that listen, but it comes inside. And when you bring things inside you, so that could, could do an effect on you. So this is the parasha of Re'e. Hashem said, Re'e, look. But just don't look superficial, superficial. Look deeply. Because sometimes through looking, you can take decisions. From hearing, you can take decisions. A lot of times, look at those people who 
who work in the Wall, Wall Street, the you know in the you know in stock the, and the, in the stock the stock the stock market. They see they see numbers, and when they see numbers, so they take these decisions. Would they uh, invest in the, the numbers that they are looking, or not? Now it depends how much they are intelligent. Sometimes it depends how much slow. A lot of times there are some people that are so much intelligent that they don't only see words, numbers. They see the you know the outcome of those numbers, and they do well. They invest well. There is others that they want to make money. They don't think about after. So they they invest money. They lose everything. I mean, you have to be, even the, the, the market has to be intelligent. If you talk about that in the market, you can imagine when you talk about the Torah. And this is, if you want to take a decision, you have to look well, you have to listen well. And then the good decision can come. And this is the parasha of Re. But there is one condition. To look well and to listen well, you have to be Akir. Akir, that means you have to be humble. A lot, of, a lot of times people think that I know everything. I don't need that they will repeat me. I know everything. And this is a mistake. You know, if it that you know everything, you have to... You have, uh, uh, the quality of a success is to be a humble people, humble man, humble person. And now I would like just to tell you this. There was a, there is a parasha that said Zot Hokat HaTorah, the parasha of uh, Para Aduma, the Red Crow, yes? That at the time you have to burn it and to throw ashes or a man that, or a person that is impure. Para Aduma. Why, why, why this kind? I mean, I mean, I mean if Shlomo Amelach, he did not understand this kind of law. Because a man that is impure, you take some the ashes of the Para Aduma, you throw on him, and he becomes pure. What's this? What's this? This is a. No, we don't understand. I mean, what kind of. What kind of mitzvah is this? I mean, give me a mitzvah that is uh, a, a mitzvah that is intelligent. I mean, uh, tell me, hey, don't cross the motor away. Because there's a car, it's logic, yes. Don't cross. If I give you an advice, hey, sir, don't cross these cars that they're running 200 kilometers an hour. It's very dangerous. If you say a car, you don't cross. Why? Because this car is going very fast. And you think you can you cannot be faster than the car, even though the car is very far away, but it can reach you in, in a few seconds. So, so don't be don't be clever. You say a car in the motorway, yeah, in the highway, you have to stop. If you don't, if you see no car, you can cross but quick. Because it could appear a car uh, from nowhere. And you can make uh, uh, you sit in danger. Just imagine. So it, it's logic. So imagine a blind man who wants to cross uh, the, the highway. I mean, in a way, we are facing, hey sir, you can, even if you are alone, you cannot cross. Okay, may, maybe instead of crossing, you, you, you will go towards the, the highway and you make yourself in danger. So it's logical that when you give him an advice. But this kind of, of, of advice that if a man is impure and you give him you throw on him some ashes of uh, of uh, of uh, the red coal and it become pure. This is something that we do not understand. So what is so the Torah said? Zot Torah. This is the condition of the Torah to be humble, just to listen. I mean, if you have success, if you want to have success in your Judaism, and if you want to be a man who fear Hashem. You have to be anav, batel, ekev. You have to be no questions. Just 
say I said one day that how can you know HaKadosh Baruch Hu? I mean we don't see HaKadosh Baruch Hu. we feel Hashem but how can we really even feeling Hashem I mean how can we feel Him how can we we feel that we live with Hashem how can we 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 we, we become Be'ezat Hashem to do Torah and Mitzvot and to be close to Hashem. The answer is Zot Hokata Torah. Do Mitzvot. Firstly, consider Hashem as the one who gives you the Torah and just do it. You, when you give a food to a child, the child don't want to eat. He don't want to eat. What do you do? Tell me. What do you do? He don't want to eat. So what do you do? He don't want to eat. You force him. Once he grew, do you force him to eat? No. No. He knows that his life is dependent on the food. This is... So don't ask questions. Why you have to do this? Why you have to do that? Just listen, look, and do. One day you will understand. There is a lot of mitzvot today that I don't know why I have to do them. Like not to touch a woman. I mean, today, not, I would like just to tell you something. One day there was a, a, you know, a, a lady, a very important lady, that uh, she was very rich, very, and she came and uh, she, she wanted to give a few millions of dollars to the Pony Beach Show of Arab Shalom. It was in America. And uh, it was, a, you know, at that time, 40 years ago, it was a big amount of money. And the Pony Beach Show, he came to the house of this lady with his secretary. And they were there, all the family. They wanted to take a picture with the lady, the old lady that she wanted to give the check the memory of her husband to the Pony Vichor. And then when he walked in, the old lady, she wanted to shake hand with the Pony Vichor. And the Pony Vichor was thinking, mm, what's going on here? So his secretary said, Kvodarav, Rebbe, she's an old lady. She said, do like that to her, don't touch. Not shake, just uh, make a, you know, a, a jest, like you want to shake her hand, but don't touch. The Pondifitch Rabbi said, but you see, if I do that, people will think that I touch. How can people and, uh, understand the Pondifitch Rabbi, he touch a woman? They may think that I touch a woman. It's a big it's a big So he said, but it's old. He said, even that she's old. I'm not allowed to do that. That means that the Pundit Shov, he was living with the Torah. They think, think that you don't understand, and they think that you can do, but no. Because maybe other people will think something that you don't think, that could bring a Hilul Hashem. And this is, how can you know the, the Master, the Adon Hashem, how? How? Zot Hokata Torah. Study Torah. You have a headache. What do you do? You take a medicine. At the beginning, you look at the medicine. You will think at yourself, how this medicine can bring me that I, I will not have headache? I mean, my head is here. The medicine is in my hand. It's a tablet. How? Tell me. I mean, I tell you, sir, Take this tablet. But this tablet, what is this, this tablet? Yeah, but this tablet can fix your head. You will not have a headache. But you, you are so clever. I don't understand my head is on my head. I have, I mean, what can, you just take it. Don't ask question now, just take it. This is Zod Hokat At the beginning, when I tell you what to connect yourself to Hashem, study Torah. You don't understand. What Torah, what study Torah, do it, do, 
will be connected to Hashem. You just do it. Don't ask questions. Just look. Do it. Listen. Because without this, taking this tablet, you always will have headache. Without studying Torah, you will never know who is Hashem. Because this tablet, when you take it, in this tablet there is something that it can fix your head. The same with the Torah. In the Torah, there is something that it can fix your head to be connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. What is the difference between an animal and a man? An animal if he has a headache, he will stay with his headache. He will stay with his headache because he, he will not know. And then you know what's going to happen? He will have so much bad headache till he, can, till he might uh, uh, kill himself or just become a mad animal and to be crazy. Because he has a headache. Yeah. A man, no. Because we will give to a man intelligence. Zot hukat, but Zot hukat a Torah. The problem today is, you know what? People didn't want to accept to tell them what to do. I mean, just imagine, I tell you, you have to do this. So you will answer me. Who are you to tell me what to, tell me what to do? So this is the condition of the Torah. Zot hukat a Torah. I mean, it ask you, Study Torah. Who are you? Why you have to study Torah? Just do it. You will see the, the benefits of it. Just do it. There was a man that I told him, you want to win the lotto? Or oh, just to make a test. He said, yes. I said, do this number. And he was so happy. And he was very, very happy to, 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 to write the numbers. And he was sure that he's going to make, he's going to win a few millions. So I told him, hey, Moshe, please go tomorrow. When uh, the lotto will, uh, will, uh, will uh, play, he said in, f in three days. Okay. Uh, I want you to do these three days to come to the yeshiva, study Torah all day. So he asked me why. <laughs> I said, why? Because it's very important. But I have, I, I, I have no time. Ah, for the lotto, you did not ask me why to write this number. You did not ask me why this number, why one, not two, why two, not three. You just wrote. But for the Torah, you say why. You see? Yeah. That's, uh, that's what the Torah said. Zot hukata Torah. Just listen. Just look. Just do. Be humble. Don't ask questions. The same way that you don't ask questions about material, don't ask questions about anything to, uh, that is connected to the spiritual. Because this is the only way how you can connect yourself to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It happened a story. A story. There was somebody that he was murdered in uh, California. He was murdered. And the, and the police, the, the, the police suspects a Jew that I know. They suspect him. And why they suspect him? Because he was the last one who saw the... the mm -hmm. huh? He's the last, guy, he's the last one who saw him. Yes, he was the last one who saw uh, uh, through the telephone. Uh, he talked to him. He was the last one. But he said, yes, I talked to him. I took him to his home, but unfortunately there were people waiting, the murderers were waiting for him inside, because it was a, a, a story about, you know, drugs, I don't know, things, uh, bad things. But he said, he told them, but on the other hand, the, the police, the, when they took the, at the end of everything, they saw that it was not him, but they had to arrest him for a few days. And then they had no... No, uh, no proof that it was him. So poor man, he was uh, suspected. So they, uh, they give him the, uh, they give him freedom, 
but uh, he was not allowed to, to leave California, he was not allowed to talk to, to people. He was like, a, uh, you know, he was, uh, was like, a, you know, in a prison in his house. So he called me and he was crying, he said, Rabbi, I did nothing. Uh, he's my friend, how can I kill my friend? And it was uh, really, I, I said, it's unfortunate it happened that I was the last one to, to call him because uh, I took him home, but it's not me and, and I don't have any arms, I mean. So, so I was, uh, just, in my, just something came to my mind. Something came to my mind. I told him, tell me, did you see do you have any friends in common? He said, yes, we have a lot of friends. I told him, can you tell me names? So he started to tell me names. Names, just uh, names. Uh, Pierre, Paul, Richard, uh, you know. But I told him, why tell me French names? Why don't you tell me English names? Because he was telling me French names. Yeah. So I said, why do you tell me French names? I said, I oh, no, I thought you wanted to know. Uh, no, I said, no, tell me names. So then, uh, he's, he, he, he's like he was hesitating. He did not tell me any, after he started, so my mother said, if this man told me only a French name, that means that it must be one of those names. Because Hashem, you see, I, 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 I said, why Hashem did not, it's in California. Why Hashem did not put in his mind to tell me names? Uh, French names, uh, English names, uh, Moroccan names, I mean, Arabs names, Chinese names. Why only French names? So that means that's from Hashem. Mm -hmm. So I said, you have to check about those French names that you told me. Who you think that he has a problem with your friend that he was murdered? He said, why do you think this? I said, because Hashem, he put in your mind only fresh names. Why did not put, you, you are in California, why you did, Hashem he did not put in your, in your mouth uh, English names uh, or American names? Why only this? To that mean only through this. So he started, he went to the police and he said, he told the police, look, I give you some names they seem to be all nice to the one that he was murdered. But do your inquiries about them. And he told him four names. And outside the four names they arrested two. And they were the killer. Yeah. They were the they were the ones who killed the the friend. The, uh, the friend. And the, they did not come to kill, they came to to take what he needed, and then started with a fight, and then uh, something came and they killed him. So you see, you see, this man, I mean, Zot Hukata Torah. I mean, you see, sometimes, do you think that you don't understand? Why this, why this? There's nothing to understand. Even, look, this man at the beginning, he said, Rabbi David, I don't understand you. Those people are good people. I said, look, I understand, I know there are good people, but I see other things. My question is why I am a believe in God, that nothing came without the permission of Hashem, everything came from Hashem. Why you don't mention me other names, why only this? So because you, have, you say only this, maybe there is something here. At the beginning we think, Torah, why have to study Torah? What the benefit of the Torah? You cannot understand. Just humble, be humble, cancel yourself, do it, you will see the benefit. An animal cannot understand if you tell him, take a, take a, if an animal has a headache and you give him a medicine, he will not take it because he doesn't know what it is. The Gemara said, Zot Hukat Torah, Adam Tiamut Baohel. What it is a dead man? You know that a dead man, he cannot move. 
a dead man cannot talk. Yes or no? Yeah. A dead man cannot do business. A dead, a dead man cannot have. Even if you put a, a lion next to the dead man, he will not run away because he's dead. Zot Hukat Torah. When it's come to accomplish Torah mitzvot, uh, you have to do it. Consider yourself that I have no choice. I have to do it. With no fear. Like this, this dead man that he no had no fear from a lion. You as well. Consider yourself towards this mitzvah that you have nothing. I have to do it. Zot hukat Torah Adam kiam ot ba'oel. A dead man, he will not run away from 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 a lion. So you as well, don't run away from that mitzvah. Do it. Zot hukat Torah Adam kiam ot ba'oel. One thing is sure: when a man pass away, and you will arrive over over there. There, there is nothing. There, there is no television, no telephone. There, there is no woman, no marriage, no children, no money, nothing. What there is there? Only Torah. Mm -hmm. So, take, take the attention as long as you live. Zot Hukat Torah, respect Torah and Mitzvot. Because one day, Adam came out by one day, when you die at 120 years, up there, you will find all in this. Because a lot of people, they will ask you, what is the benefit to study Torah? Why? And the answer is, okay. Okay. The benefit is, if you don't do it now, what you will do after 120 years? Adam Kiyamut, what you will do? Business, there is no business. Yeah, but it's boring. It's boring. Up there, you will be more boring because up there, there is nothing to do. So, Zot Hokata Torah, do it now, it's a good medicine. Adam Kiyamut by Powell, because there will be a problem one day. You know, there was a man that uh, he wanted to get married. And the, the, his parents, they said, no, the girl, she's not good, and uh, it's, uh, it's not a good family, blah, 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 blah. Well, uh, the poor man, he was so depressed. He was very depressed. Because he really wanted to, he wanted really this man, he, he really wanted this, uh, this woman, and uh, he, he liked her. So they asked me, they come, they ask me. And I ask the, the parents, why you don't want a woman? Why we don't want a woman? Because uh, she's not for him, because uh, she's not uh, this, she's not this, she's not this. With all kind of argument. And then I saw in their argument that they were right. And uh, she was beautiful. But sometimes you don't marry with the beautiful. You have to get married to the to the Achamayim, like Shlomo Melech said, "Sheker Hahem veHeve LeYufi Ishay At Hashem Bidit Halay." The most important is not the beauty, the Achamayim. You marry all your life with the Achamayim. I mean, she's pretty today. Tomorrow, tomorrow she will be old. When she will be old, they will be not pretty anymore. <laughs> but in Achamayim, it will remain all the time because in Achamayim, it takes you to the island. You will live here well and you will live with her well after. So, so I, 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 so he told me, so what, what do you advise me, Rabbi? I say, I advise you, listen to your parents. Rabbi, it's very hard for me. I say, look, I know it's hard for you. Because no, you, you only look for the beauty Be'ezat Hashem I think you Be'ezat Hashem Just believe on your parents and believe in the Barakha that they will give you with the Zichur that you, you, you listen to your parents Hashem will open you the doors 
if the rabbi is going to be very hard for me. Because I don't see myself without this woman. I said, believe. It's very hard for me, he said. And then he said, Rabbi, I'm going to for her right now to finish. If we didn't give her a beautiful ring, it cost me $10,000 ring. I don't care. She can take it. I finished. And I hope that I will have a good life. A few weeks later, he met a beautiful woman. Not beautiful woman, pretty, big Hachamayim. And they got married. And Baruch Hashem, they live well. They are in Israel now. They live in Israel. He's a Ben Torah. And Baruch Hashem, she's a Bat Torah. And Baruch Hashem, and they, they live very well. And I saw him from, from time to time. I see him. <coughs> I saw his children. I saw his family. And Baruch Hashem, he's very happy. Sometimes you don't understand why you have to do this. Zot Hokata Torah. When you do something without asking questions, Hashem help you. I would like just to tell you a beautiful story. One of the best stories yeah. that, that I, uh, I, I, I heard. There was a, there was a, uh, there was a, a woman that uh, always she makes sure to listen only good things. She was a seminary, seminar girl, and she heard that when you listen bad things, so you do bad things. When you, you hear good things, so you do good things. So always, as, you know, as I told you before, according to you, what, what you hear, you do. According to what, what you see, you do. So you have to be careful what you see, what you, what you hear. And this girl, she was a seminary girl, so one day she took the she wanted to go to to Tveria, and she took the uh, not the bus, in a taxi. You know the taxi that he he take a few uh, few people to travel. There were five, six, seven people, and then the taxi stop, they carry on, and then here you have, you have few people that they were talking very very bad in the taxi, and they, they were talking so bad and they did put radio with very, very bad, uh, bad, uh, you know, bad music. And uh, this uh, uh, orthodox girl, she was uh, very uh, embarrassed. And she told the driver, please, it's hard for me to listen to all, to all this. Please do me a favor. The driver said, no, I'm not here. I'm not, the taxi is not only for you. It's not a special taxi. It's for all the travelers, so I, I'm sorry. So there was there a rabbi that he was listening uh, to MP3, uh, Shiro. So he saw that it was, uh, they were arguing, talking. He said, what's going on? So she told him, I asked the driver, if you can stop this music, it's a bad music, and I'm going to go to Abimei Balanis to pray. And the... Uh, and, uh, it, it, it uh, disturbed me. So the rabbi asked the driver. So the driver said, no, I'm sorry. I am the driver for everybody. If she, she's not happy, she can, she can uh, get out from here. But she, she, told, she told him, so stop. I want to get out. But, you know, when you go from Tel Aviv to, to, to Tveria, you pass an Arab village. And there they were Arab village. The rabbi says, it's dangerous here. You, we stop you in Megiddo. There is a, in a junction there. There is armies, there is all the Jewish people, but he is very dangerous. So that's what she did. She stopped. And she went out. The, the, the rabbi told her, I'm very proud of you. I'm proud of you. Well, a few hours later, the, 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 the rabbi, he was walking in Tveria, and you see this girl crossing the street with her old lady. So the rabbi said, ah, Hashem, you arrived. So that the lady told him, Baruch Hashem, I arrived, and Baruch Hashem, I'm happy, and thanks God, everything is good. I'm very, very happy. The rabbi told her, I'm so proud of you. 
Because what you did, no one can do that. I mean, you you risk it yourself to get out in a in a, in a, in a stop where there is Arab village, and then just not to hear bad music. I'm so proud of you. She told him, "Well, uh, thanks God, Baruch Hashem. A lot of good things happened since in three hours." So the rabbi said, who is this uh, lady? This lady, I don't know her. When I took the taxi, she was there, and we started to talk in the taxi to take us from Megiddo to Tveria. And she asked me to take her to Rabbi Mevalanes to help her, because I was going to Rabbi Mevalanes. So I helped her uh, while I was uh, after praying at the cave of Rabbi Mevalani. Now I want to take her home. And uh, I would like just to tell this lady, she's the wife of a very rich man. And when she asked me who I am, and I told her just I came to ask from somebody a donation to lend me uh, the, you know, the wedding uh, dress. Because I have no money. She told me, you came to Tveria for a work, to lend a, a, a wedding dress? So you have no money. I will pay you the whole wedding. I, I, I will make you the best wedding of the weddings. So this is the lady. Wow. And here's the, here's the money that she gave me. Because she said, all the money for my wedding all the money that I need, and not only this, and the other day she said, this is nothing, I will give you more, and I will give you more, you are like my daughter. So the rabbi told her, you see, just imagine that you will not stop in Megiddo, you will not meet that woman, and because you, you were you wanted to do the mitzvah, not to listen to bad things, like what I should give you. Zot Hokat HaTorah. Sometimes you don't know why I have to do this. I mean, so what? Why I have to risk my life? To stop in the car, in the middle of the road, where Arabs village, or in Megiddo, I carry on, so there is bad music, so what? It's not my fault. No. Zot Hokat HaTorah. Only re'e anuchi nutel iflichem hayom beracha uklala et haberach ashet ishmi'un. Look, you want to be yeresh amayim? Make sure what you see. Make sure what you look, what you hear. This is the beracha. What it is the klala? If you see bad things, you listen to bad things. This is the klala. Sometimes people say, so what if I saw? So what if, so what if I heard? What you saw, what you heard, can make, make a big effect on your neshama. Or in good or in bad. I remember one day I saw something bad. And for a few years, that disturbed me, what I saw. And it was not a purpose. I saw something bad. It's not, it's not my fault. It's not, it's, it's not my fault. I did not look to, to, to look at it. He just came. Still, you're not allowed to do that. You have to be patient. You have to avoid it. You have to avoid. Sometimes we don't avoid. We look something, and we carry on looking at that thing. And after, ah, it's not good to see. But you, you missed the, the goal. When something bad came quickly, you have to avoid it. If it's good or bad. No, if it's good, good. If it's bad, avoid it. Look at this lady. What? Hashem gave her the big bracha. Why? Because she was a strong lady. She don't want to hear bad things. She don't want. She don't want. My match. She don't want. I would like just to tell you this. I want to just to, to tell you this. How much you think a man can uh, 
just to, how much you see what it is the limit of a man what you see what not you see what it is limit you have an answer what it is the limit what you see what you don't see there is no limit one thing I tell you if you are close to Hashem close to the Torah the Torah will help you I promise you the Torah will help you what you see what not to see I promise you the Torah will help you Yes, uh, it's, it's, it's for sure. The Torah will help you. You know, it's like uh, there is a... Uh, I, 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 I was reading... Uh, I was reading the, this uh, parasha of... Uh, of uh, Hukat. Bemet, huh? There is here, uh, you know, when... Uh, uh, I saw this... Uh, Uh, this parasha that is here Yosef Halal Shalom, I was just looking where. And the parish of Chukat, there is there. Vayishir Aram Bikadish, Vatamut Sham, Miriam, Vatikabir Sham. The death of Miriam, the Torah, mentioned that she died there and she was buried there. I mean, if she died there, she was buried there. Why did I say she died there and she was buried there? Why did Torah would not say she died there and she was buried? Who cares where she was buried? Why the Torah said sham, sham? The second question that I have, I have another question. Why did Torah not mention that people cried Miriam? I mean, don't forget that the Jews, they had water with Zichot Miriam. Now that, for 40 years, they had water with the Zichot of Miriam. Yes or no? Yes. So why the Torah would not mention that when she died, when Moshe Rabbeinu died, the Jews cried Moshe. When Aaron died, the Jews cried Moshe. Uh, uh, Aaron, they cried Aaron. Why not Miriam? Why? You know what? You know, Bemet, Bemet. And I was thinking that in the life of Miriam, Miriam, she was a woman. She was a woman, yes or not? I mean, she could say, I'm not Moshe, I'm not Aaron. Why I have to, to take care of other women, of Jewish women? The same way that Moshe and Aaron, they were the leaders of the men, Miriam, she was the leader of who? Woman. Of the woman. And she could, you know, usually women are weaker, yes or not? Yes. So she could say, why I, Wherever, all the life of Miriam, it was there, there. Every, where is Miriam? She's there. Where is Miriam? She's there. Where is Miriam? She's there. Always Miriam, she was somewhere. I mean, Miriam, she was a lady. Yes, but the ladies should learn from this, this lady. A lady should not uh, uh, limit herself. Because the ladies, a lot of times, they can limit it him, themselves. I'm a lady, I'm an old lady, I'm not a man, I'm weaker. No! She was, she died there, 
she was buried there. Miriam, always, wherever she went, there was their bracha. That's what we want to learn. The same way that the Torah mentioned she died there and she was buried there, so where Miriam in her lifetime, she was everywhere. And everywhere where she was, it was benefit. She bought something there. She was there. If she was there, so she bought something there. Something good was there. You know, you have to know one thing. Die there, bury there. So what is it the opposite? The opposite, wherever Miriam goes, she's there, something good is there. Yeah. The presence of a tzaddik, wherever it is, there is always something benefit. But you, you saw that people did not, did not cry the death of Miriam. You know, quickly, when Miriam was, uh, she died, people, instead of crying, they were thirsty. They had no time to cry, Miriam. Yeah. They started to look for water. Why they started to look for water? Because a lot of times, a lot, a lot of times, you cry the death of somebody, and then you forget. And she said, no, I don't want that people will cry Miriam to forget Miriam. I want them to realize what Miriam did for them. Water. There is no water. Ah, the water was for Miriam. Wherever Miriam she was, the Baracha was there. Why? Zot Hokat HaTorah. This is the law of the Torah. The law of the Torah is not only for the men, women too. There is a lot of mitzvah that the women do. We don't know why they have to do it. Why? Zot Hokat HaTorah. There is no answer. There is no answer. You have a question for me? Up to now? No. Don't forget, when Sarah died, they were crying. They were crying. Right. And, 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 and here, for Miriam, the Torah doesn't mention that people cried Miriam. Why not? Why not? Because Hashem, he wanted to teach. Oh, the what they were losing. Hashem wanted to teach the Jews because if they will cry Miriam, so they will forget about all the benefits that Maria bring them. Right, but now that they remember. They, but now that they. Now that, did they cry after they realized? Huh? They cried after they realized. Uh, sure, the, the, for, for, for the moment, the, the, Torah, the Torah mentioned only what, uh, that there is water missing. And now they realize that the water was before Maria. So, of course, when they are thirsty, you cry. So they cry because they were thirsty, and they cry because of the death of Miriam. They realize what, what, uh, what they were missing. And for him, you understand that the Miriam, uh, the learning for Miriam is Sham Sham. Wherever Miriam she was in her, uh, 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 during her lifetime, wherever she was, she broke the bracha there. There, there, always there. And two people, when they go somewhere, they have no success. So they went thinking they're going to have a success. Maybe they were well, very well welcome, but after, after it, it was no success. But Maria, no, wherever she went, it was a success. Wherever she goes. Usually, women cry. Yeah. But the Torah doesn't say that woman they cry, Maria. It's quick. And she, you wanted that. Uh, because when the woman cried, the man cried, the children cried, everybody, everybody is crying. But as she said, I don't, I don't need their cry. And because, you know, usually, uh, usually the woman had snowed and the, the Torah had not mentioned crying. But as she said, no, what, for what Miriam did for them now? They must remember Miriam all night. Zot Hokata Torah. It's incredible, 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 incredible. And my friend, I would like just to tell you one thing and finish. If you have to, if you want to have success in your life, Zot Hokata Torah. Your story. 
The story is a beautiful story. You were studying Gemara, and then you lost your Gemara, and you have pain, and you were sad because this stole your Gemara, and you went to the place where this stole your Gemara, and you were very sad, and then what happened? A few days after, you find there the Gemara, this, the, the Ganav, the one who stole your handbag, he keep the handbag, but he put there the Gemara. Can you imagine that? <laughs> you cannot imagine this. I mean, why? Because Hashem, Zot Chokat Torah, when Hashem, he see how much you love the Torah. So HaKosh Mori show you, you love the Torah? I bring, I give you back. The Ganav who steal the Gemara, he will bring you back the Gemara. Zot Chokat Torah. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, this Ganav, why has to bring back the Gemara? He stole your handbag, he took everything, he took the money, I don't know what was there, so the Gemara should throw it in the, in the dustbin, that's it. Yeah. No. No. Hashem he put in his mind, bring back the Gemara with all the notes that Meir wrote in the Gemara. Bring him back the Gemara. Zot Hokata Torah. When Hashem he see you, how much you love Torah, this is the benefit. Zot Hokata Torah, this is, this is the benefit. Re'e, look, listen. But look only good things. Listen good things. Why you have to listen good things? Why you have to look only good things? Because only this what you will take with you after 120 years. The good things that you listen and the good things that you look. Because by looking, by listening, you will do. You will do them. And that's what you will take with you after 120 years. Look at the story of, the, of that lady. Yeah. It's an amazing story. So, Beit Hashem, I wish you bracha v'tzlacha v'bri'ut.